Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you yeah? can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics in Nigeria is for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's really? disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. There could be a strategy. That strategy was it's a terrible, very strategy. Very terrible <laughs> strategy. Because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. No two advocacies are the same, which is why you're guaranteed a variety menu on today's edition. Welcome to The Advocate. Falasha Day is suddenly warmed up to things, and today is asking what may seem like a trick question, essentially. Is church good for you? Liberos is clear as to what is good for us. He spotlights the celebration and promotion of our local culture. Ekenya says that marriage unions can be a bedrock of selfish, imposed authority. That's hard hitting. Ronke is back. This time, she wants us to pay attention to a certain trendy 21st century skill known as collaboration. I have a very direct message to deliver as concerns our brother, our brother closure. I'm saying, shut them out after the break. Two months ago, Precisely on August 21st, the federal government ordered the closure of our western borders, slapping restriction on cross-border trade with our neighbors, especially the Republic of Benin. The reason? To curb rampant uh, smuggling activities and protect our economy. This move has created a ripple effect as far ashore as the port of Baltimore, Thailand, and India. Officially, 13% of Brit uh, Benin's total export volume is to Nigeria. But according to the World Bank information trade between the two countries account for 20% of Benin's GDP. So one would wonder, what exactly does Benin produce or manufacture and export to Nigeria? The answer is Benin produces nothing of her own. All she does is import items such as frozen foods, used clothes, used vehicles and rice, and then we export to Nigeria illegally via smuggling. This isn't all. In the reverse trade, Petrol is being smuggled out on a large scale. So in essence, Nigeria pays subsidy for petrol that Beninois consume. This economic sabotage should not continue, and it is the reason why I wholeheartedly support the closure of the borders until such a time that the government of Benin will control illicit trade across its borders. However, the federal government must find ways to address the attendant effect of border closure rising food prices, especially rice, streamline and simplify clearing process at our seaport, address our port transportation system so that agri produce can move easily within the country. Trade with a neighbor is essential, they say, but we must also be mindful of that between 10 and 20% of Nigeria, Nigeria's manufactured goods are sold to other countries in West Africa with many of these items such as pasta and cosmetics exported through small sellers who travel around the region. So while it is commendable for government to curb smuggling activities, it, is also, it must also be mindful not to distort the legal cross-border trade. Yeah, um, I like the fact that um, you talked about, uh, yeah, close, close the border but the essence of closing the border should be to address the business. And um, is government addressing that issue? Or are we just going to leave the border, you know, perpetually closed? Because also, I, I, like, I also like the fact that you talked about, you know, the businesses, exports from this country. Because when you close to those coming in, you close to those going out. out and also you have loads of trucks, you know, from the Nigerian side, all you know, at the border and those coming from Benin. And then another thing for me, lastly on this, is the fact that over time, you hear government admit that our borders are porous, our borders are porous, mm -hmm. and there are illegal routes everywhere. Mm -hmm. And you have 
people, if you go to the Nigerian border, border between the Benin Republic, you have all sorts. And yet these same borders, borders are porous. And there is no solution to the problem apart from you know, closing it and then the attendant effect. If the borders were not porous, and also, like you also said, if the costs of importing through our seaports you know, are not that onerous, people won't go to Benin Republic. So all of these, for me, I think are issues need government to need to address. While, you know, this should be a temporary measure, but, you know, for a lasting solution, you need to address all the yeah. issues raised. I mean, just so that to... tomorrow another government won't come. Because remember, in 1984, we did this. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, just to piggyback on what, I mean, I'm sure you also are mindful yeah. of the same thing. Yeah. You know, we seem to act sometimes in a way that doesn't show that we've thought things through. Even the issue of people whose goods are left at the border, it, it looks like they didn't tell people, they didn't no, give no, them no, no enough notice. So no, you have people no with legitimate goods there, stocked up, you know, spoiling and, you know, just being destroyed for lack of information. They said had they given them information maybe a month in advance, they would not have gone and gone through those processes. I just want to also take issue slightly with the fact that you say Benin Republic uh, doesn't produce anything. <laughs> you know, they do produce raw cot cotton and they export raw cotton and, and other goods and maybe not, you know, gold amongst them. You know, yes, clearly they're part of the people that are taking advantage of our porous borders. I hear we have up to 1,700 borders. Be because their How processes, are you going to even export, secure all those borders? The you know? export and import processes are simpler than mm. that of Nigeria. And so that's why people would rather import from them. through Benin. Yes. I don't then, want them to seem like they're the fall guys. I'm sure there are other people taking advantage, including Nigerians the, themselves, the, the, who the, are happily allowing our borders to that, remain that, that way. The problem with Benin is they're complicit in all of this. So are Nigerians. Yes. Mm. But they have allowed this illegal trade to thrive because their economy depends on it. They make money for right. it. Yeah, absolutely. But it's time for us now to say no, enough is enough. Yeah, but the uh, Nigeria's to interest. Is to say they wouldn't succeed if Nigerians weren't also party to that. Yeah, so now, illicit, well. Illicit trading. So Nigerians yes, are so also yes, yes, they're all part. Yeah, yeah of course, the Nigerians that bring the top, uh, Tokumbo cars from Baltimore and everywhere, <laughs> drive through illegal <laughs> routes. Yes, they do. The, the problem here is that, yes, there are a whole lot of problems I, I yeah. mentioned, but I mean, we have to start from somewhere. Yeah. This, it's, it, from it's a somewhere. national emergency. Yes. We, we're encouraging rice farmers, and yet... It, it, uh, it's uh, starting but, from somewhere. Imagine in 1979, 1980, 81, 82, we're buying new brand new cars. Mm -hmm. uh, but on the flip side, 30, 30 something years down the line, we are buying used cars. Structural we adjustment. Buying used <laughs> we are buying clothes. We are buying used everything. Mm. And, and so, and that's one of the reasons also why these people, they, it's an opportunity for them. Yeah. It's an opportunity. But right? I guess the question is. 30 years down the line, why are we buying used cars mm. and used clothes? It's about our economy. It's about economy. It? I think, say, into that, as much as I agree with you about um, the issues, I feel that the question we need to be asking the government very robustly is how are they planning to solve the issues and how are they going to address the root causes? Because that's, that, that is the main issue. Closing the borders for the sake of closing the borders without dealing with the root issues is not going to solve the problem. And I think it's slightly unfair, as Akena said, to kind of place the blame with the I Republic of Benin because at the end of the day, we are very complicit. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I think we're just I, Africans I, and both sides are guilty. Yeah, that's so true. That's just, the no, corruption I, lies both at the Benin Republic and, and Nigeria. Nigeria. Yeah. So I, I think once we start to deal with those issues of regarding corruption. Yeah, there's, there's also, I think, a, a very silent political angle to it as well. Okay. Um, there are some Nigerian businesses who suffered in Republic of Benin, like Dongote, he's okay. had a serious okay. outing there, at the, um, Globalcom, they've had very serious outing. So why should we continue to take the, exactly. from them and, then and you won't allow suffer from this? Do you understand? Mm. So from when you look at it holistically, you know, we should not allow this illegal trade. No, to, no but, to but, but like what really you're saying, which I'm still saying, right. we should we should follow up closing borders. I the, hope the, we are. The issue is the things you listed this, there. Yes, this, so those are the things. This uh, make sure that the uh, import uh, channels are streamlined. Yes. So clearing your goods should not take like Ghana Eternity. 48 hours. Yeah. Your goods are out. Yeah, that's that's you know? where so I have a are, concern. These goods are imported through Benin Republic, and the duties are paid to Benin Republic. Yes. So if you now allow them to pass through your borders, into your country. You don't need to blame Benin Republic for allowing goods come through their country. 
They collect charges. They streamline their processes. Yes, they plan and it, so it works for them. It works for them. And so it is at the point of entry your country. It's not their business how it enters your country. It is your business to protect. So that's what we're doing now, addressing that. We we're not addressing it. We're addressing it. Well, now we, are now we have, we we have we're addressing now. it. We have all, in the past, you have just uh, customs at the border. Yes. Now we have the army. We have the. Because we have closed the border. border. Yes. When we open sure. it. So now we need to understand where the leakage is. Every day, social media is downed with pictures of seized items from all of those routes. So, you, so we now we're rice. identifying those areas. Because we all know the rice situation. We're eating rice now. Right. Now the borders are closed. Our local farmers are not being encouraged to produce quality rice because we're still buying inferior rice at a higher price. Right. So, you know, when they open borders, some of us will quickly rush back to the imported to rice. To imported rice. Well, establishing clear boundaries can be a good foundation to developing productive relationships. Falashade queries what she sees as a not-so-productive social interaction after the break. <laughs>